Here I go again, defending more cheap record players. Recently I've seen some reviews of the Anabas GPN3R, which is a battery-powered portable record player that is based on the design of the Columbia GP3, which was sold in Japan for many years and has somewhat of a cult following over there. And by all accounts, this new version, which has been significantly upgraded over the original, actually works pretty well and sounds very good. But the problem is, it's only sold in Japan. Over there, it sells for 19,800 yen, which is equivalent to about $179 US. And you can get one imported to the U.S., but by the time you pay for the shipping and import fees, it ends up costing around $260, which is a lot of money to spend on what looks like a cheap plastic toy, even if it does actually sound very good. But there's another battery-powered portable record player you can buy here in the U.S., and I'm sure other parts of the world as well. For less than half that price, it's the new Mark PT-01 and is currently available for $119. But as is typical for this channel, I didn't spend that much because I found this one at a thrift store. It's in perfect working condition, however, it's missing the lid and the latch that clamps the tone arm in place. So I went on eBay and I found this, the Ion version of the same thing because Ion and Newmark are owned by the same company and many of their products are very similar. This version has been discontinued but you can still find used ones quite easily. This one did come with the lid. It has a latch to secure it in place or you can slide it over to the left to allow you to open it. And this one also did include the latch to hold the tone arm in place. This is the Ion IPT01 but aside from the name, it's identical to the Newmark version. So let's take a look around these record players and I'll show you what makes them different than the typical suitcase style portable record players from brands like Crosley and Victrola. There are some similarities such as this undersized platter, which is the perfect size for playing 7 inch records. But if you put on a full size 12 inch record, it'll hang off the edge. However, there's no need to worry about your records getting damaged by that because the platter is covered with this soft felt material. And it also has these felt pads around the edge, which the record should not normally touch when it's in operation. But just in case the record is excessively warped, it'll slide smoothly across these felt pads instead of getting scratched by the surface of the player. There's also a single built-in speaker, which is obviously only mono, but it sounds a lot better than those suitcase style players and I'd rather have one good sounding mono speaker than two tinny sounding stereo speakers which are only about a foot apart so you can't really hear any stereo separation from them anyway so it's no big loss that this is only a single speaker built in especially because all the other outputs are in stereo you get two sizes of headphone jacks the larger quarter inch plug and a smaller 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter plug. You get stereo left and right line level outputs. And on the current version of the Newmark PT-01, you also get a USB output for transferring your records into your computer. However, this older original PT-01 does not have the USB output. On the front, you get a speed selector switch for 33 and a third, 45 and 78 RPM. So it supports all three speeds. In addition, you get a pitch control adjustable to minus or plus 10% with a center detent position at the correct speed. You also get a tone control for the built-in speaker and headphone outputs. And finally, you get your volume control. As I mentioned, these players can run on batteries. You get battery compartment for six D-cell batteries, which are quite large and heavy, but they should power the turntable for a good long time. It can also run on a 12 volt power adapter. It says AC 12 volts, but I've used it with a DC 12 volt power adapter and it works perfectly fine. So you could actually hook this up to a car battery if you rig up a cable for it. And you may think this is the same kind of cheap plastic tone arm and ceramic phono cartridge that you've seen on those suitcase style players from Crosley and Victrola. However, there are several major differences with these players. First of all, 
This is actually a real counterweight. This part at the back of the torn arm is not just an empty plastic molding. It actually has a metal counterweight in there. And in addition, the torn arm uses a spring. That is what actually supplies the tracking force. The counterweight just balances out the torn arm and then the spring applies the correct tracking force. The advantage of that tone arm design is that these record players can play records at any angle, including vertically or even upside down, as I demonstrated in a video a couple of years ago. Another important difference is that while this looks like your typical cheap ceramic cartridge with the red stylus on it, this is actually a genuine Japanese-made Chuodenshi cartridge, not one of the Chinese clones of it. And the tracking force is around 4.76 grams, which is pretty much identical to that Anabas record player with the Audio-Technica cartridge. That might sound heavy compared to what you're used to, but as I've explained in my previous videos, vinyl records were originally designed for a tracking force of 5 to 6 grams. In fact, back in the 1960s, Warner Brothers Records used to print directly on their LP labels stylus pressure not to exceed 6 grams. So these players are comfortably below that limit. I just wish these players had that same design as the Columbia and Anabas record players where there's a raised edge to prevent you from accidentally scratching your stylus against the top of the record player, as you can see accidentally happened to this one. But for what it's worth, this plinth is actually made of metal, not plastic. Now that's all well and good about the design of these record players, but you may be wondering, how good do they actually sound? Well first I'll give you a brief sample through the built-in speaker, as recorded using this Sony ECM MS908C microphone. Do you still shop for vinyl quite often? I, I as a matter of fact, I seek out vinyl very selectively. My, my first uh, aim is to try to replace the collection that I so foolishly uh, offered it now in the Getty collection archives through Michael Oakes, but... Most I, people just take it to a thrift store. Yeah, we can but you did. get that back, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Emerald of the sea Bermuda is calling me and I must go You land on an island An island so fair When you're on the Bermuda You're listening to the exciting music of the Bermuda Islands by the famous entertainers featured every day on the Bermuda Island Cruise. Are you ready for another sound story now? Close your eyes and try to see a backyard with someone playing beside a wading pool. Can you see the water in the pool? The first sound you hear is the sound of a bouncing ball. Listen now and see whether you can tell what happens to the ball.
The one practical benefit of this tone arm design which can play at any angle without skating is that means it inherently has anti-skating. As I can demonstrate with this record which has a blank side. If I put it down, you'll see it does not swing towards the middle. Because this tone arm design inherently has anti-skating. Now I'm testing the speed accuracy with a strobe disc. Where the tip of my marker is pointing is the strobe for 33 and a third RPM. And with the pitch control centered, you can see the dots are moving slightly to the left, which means it's running a little bit fast, but of course we have a pitch control. So if I adjust that very little bit to slow it down slightly, I can get it to be almost perfectly at the correct pitch. And here's the strobe disc test at 45 RPM. I didn't cut the center hole of this piece of paper exactly where it should be so that's why it's kind of dancing around but you can see again it's running a little bit fast with the pitch control at the center detent position and finally the strobe disc test at 78 rpm just like the two other speeds with the pitch control centered it runs a little bit fast but of course you can easily adjust the pitch control to get that perfect. Next, I'll do a direct sound quality comparison between this Crosley Cruiser suitcase player and the Newmark PT-01. First, playing through the built-in speakers as recorded using this Sony ECM MS-908C microphone, and then recorded directly from the line output jacks of both record players. Racing with the moon Racing with the So the PT-01 is not an audiophile turntable by any means, but it's certainly much closer to full range than the typical suitcase player, both through the built-in speaker and through the line output. And these little record players have become very popular with DJs, especially those who do turntablism, or what is more commonly known as scratching. And these Newmark and Ion players have a cult following among those DJs. They've developed an extensive range of modifications for these record players, including a replacement tone arm which can accept a standard half-inch mount magnetic phono cartridge and a preamp to go along with that, as well as a fader which they use for their scratching effects. And Newmark has actually released a specific version of the PT-01 for those who do scratching, the PT-01 Scratch which has a built-in fader, but if you're just going to be playing records normally, then obviously you don't need that model. You can just use the regular and less expensive PT-01. I know there's going to be people asking, why would you buy one of these record players when you can get a real turntable like an ATLP-60X for around the same price, which will deliver much higher audio quality? And they do have a point. I wouldn't recommend buying one of these just to play records at home, but if you have a specific need or want for a battery powered portable record player or you just want to impress your friends by playing records at any angle or even upside down without spending almost $300 on one of those Japanese imports then I think the PT-01 is worth buying. And after all, if the DJs were right about the Technics SL-1200 being a great turntable, maybe they're right about this one too. Dick is still trying to learn how to call the hogs and grandfather still says it's easy. All you do is put your hands to your mouth and go like this. Can you call hogs? Dick hopes he can someday.